What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for a brand new show that we are reviewing, that we are discussing. The Encore, or I should say, BET presents The Encore. Baby, baby, Carlos King, nigga, nigga, nigga. Okay, I really think you got a hit on your hand. Not a hit in the group, but a hit with this show. Okay, because if we're going to be honest, we got to be honest. If we're going to review this show, if we're going to talk about this show, we just got to be fucking honest. Okay, we bring in nine groups, or I should say nine women from previous girl groups or solo artists or whatever. We are bringing them together in one house to live for 30 days to come up with, I don't know if it's a full album or just a song and a performance. Okay. Now, truth be told, given the fact that they just met each other, I would just suffice with a um song. Okay, a full fucking album. I just not here for it. I'm just not seeing how that's gonna happen with everything that just happened in the first couple of days that we saw in this first episode. Okay, listen. This let's just be honest. All right. If a song do come out by the end of this goddamn show, I will be freaking surprised, okay? I will be so surprised. And I'm not trying to be doubtful. I'm not trying to be hating or nothing like that. I'm just trying to be real. We watching this because this is some good television. Um, Ain't nothing else going on right now. You know what I'm saying? But we like to see these girls. And it's very much giving me R&B Divas tea. So I knew I was going to like it anyway. And so far, I am not disappointed. It was shady. It was messy. It was some good fun, okay? That's what it is. Bitch, let's just get into the episode. Episode number one, season one. Girl, I don't know if it's going to bring back another season. Girl, I, listen, I hope it do. What if they rotate the girls out and try to do this? That'd be cute. It'd be messy as hell. It'd be cute, though. But anyway, it's called Let the Music Play, baby. Some people in this whole soul super group or whatever, first of fucking all, I get the concept. I get the concept. But putting nine R&B or not even all R&B because Aubrey O'Day is in there too. And she mostly a pop girl. You know what I'm saying? But putting all these different personalities together, it's not organic. And we seen groups that have been put together. They put out a couple of albums and then they break up. If they get to a couple of albums and then they break up. One Direction. Um, what's that gr fifth harmony and shit like that? They break up and go their own separate ways. Okay. But these are girls from the past that has already had some level of success, whether it was big, whether it was small, whether it was medium, they tasted some level of su success in a way, you know, but I said, you put nine motherfuckers together, nine people. I said, bitch, we, this ain't no Korean girl band. <laughs> What? You know, and if you don't get what I'm talking about, go look up some of these Korean groups, okay? BTS got like 15,000 um, members and everything. It works for them because they got their worth et ethnic and they had time to put that shit together. Girl, I don't know about this, okay? We got a lot. Age ain't on our side in this piece and ageism came into this piece, but, you know, it's like... You know what I'm saying? Especially we can tell who has been still doing stuff and who hasn't. You know, our bones is aching. Our bones is aching. And we saw it all up in this episode, okay? Now, when we first get started, uh, the first group that gets there is Cherish, all right? And we get Fallon and Felicia, the twins of Cherish, okay? You know, and um, they was like, oh, so we the first ones here or whatever. Now, at first, I'm thinking, um, you know, do it, do it, do it. You know, I'm like, all right, cool, Cherish. Everybody knows some Cherish songs, at least one. You know, everybody know that do it, do it, bounce with it, bounce with it, whatever the fuck it goes. Okay, because at one point, whatever year that came out, that was down, that was during the time where it was the snap movement going on and the lean with it, rock with it, you know, um, snap your fingers with it era. I think I was either in high school or I was in college at the a freshman in college. No, I wasn't a freshman in college. It had to have been. Girl, either way, I was in school, bitch. I was in school and I was young as shit and I was all here for it. Everything that was coming out of Atlanta, okay? You know, that's what was happening. So they get there and I was like, okay, cool. You know, they whatever. I'm thinking I'm going to like these girls' personality and everything. You know, they seem cool. I never heard anything bad about them. I did know because after looking at the research, I knew that they were still doing some things in the music industry. So they're very much active in the music industry. May not be for themselves, but for others. Okay, fine. 
Bitch, the next person that showed up was Pam from Total, okay? Now, let me tell you something about Pam. Pam, you know, I'm trying not to go in on you and be shady because, you know, you did some foul stuff. You did some foul stuff to your ex-husband. I'm not going to call you out on it on this show. I'm not going to do that, okay? I'm not going to put your personal business out there or whatever, but y'all just look it up. Centoria Brown, her ex-husband is Centoria Brown's new uh, husband at this point. And some shit went down that was real fucking foul, okay? And I don't give a damn if you gave an apology, I'm still gonna look at you sideways. And you was one of my favorites, bitch. For some reason, let me tell you something. When Total fucking came out, I don't care how long this review is. Because I'm, I'm, I'm getting nostalgia and I gotta go down memory lane. Total came out, bitch. For some reason, I don't know, Pam, bitch... Pam just gave me stud tees that just dressed up feminine for work, okay? That's what it was, all right? She gave me aggressive tees, aggressive film, maybe a little soft stuff, but with a little aggressive edge, you know what I'm saying? That's what she gave me. And if you don't know what those terms are, that's what we call some of the people, uh, some of the women in the lesbian community, okay? She gave me that tease. Bitch, I should have known back then, okay? I knew something was brewing back then because I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm drawn to her, not in a sexual way, but for some reason, it's like I feel a kinship because she a nigga. And I ain't talking about a man. I'm just talking about like, whoa, you know, because I'm a nigga. Okay? I'm a nigga. With my mannerism and everything. You know what I'm saying? Attitude, aggression, and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Something about it just drew me to it. And then when I found out that she was married to a man, I was like... For real? Oh. Okay. If you say so. But, you know, all of a sudden, Miss Ma'am come up in there with her mask. Bitch, she was the only one that had a mask on this whole time. We are doing this in the time of corona, and she was the only one that had the mask on. She did not play about that mask for the most of the goddamn show, okay? Baby, I was here for it. Bitch, when Fallon and Felicia saw her, she said, one of them said, oh, my God, I think it was Fallon. She was like, so... Um, when I signed up to do this, I didn't think that we was going to be with somebody. I thought we was going to be with somebody that was below 40. <laughs> and that set the fucking tone for the show. That is where all the shades started coming in. That was the first one. I said, oh, no, man, we're not about to do this, bitch. She ain't even said nothing to you yet. And you talking about shade or whatever. Then Nivea comes in, you know, trying to see what's good. You know what I'm saying? Nivea was like, who the fuck is going to be here? Okay, like, who, who, who the other girls at and everything? Nivea was just real trill with it, real, real with it, okay? Everybody know Nivea and, you know, Laundry Mac and... Uh, don't mess with my man. Everybody knows a Nivea song. Okay, cool. You know, cool, fine. Then we get um, girl, I don't remember. Aubrey come up in there. We know Aubrey from Danny Kane. Trust and believe. A couple of girls from Danny Kane don't even look like themselves no more. And um, Aubrey is one of them, and the black girl is the other one. Dawn. Okay, I'm just gonna put it out there. They don't look like themselves no more. Truth be told, Don's work, even though she don't look like herself no more, you can call it makeup and contour all you want, but bitch, you didn't win under the night somewhere. It looks good. It looks good. Aubrey, on the other hand. Moving on from that, you know, she'll stop up. Uh, okay, whatever. Um, because you know I'm damaged. Um, anyway, so Aubrey, she probably she probably one of the ones that really got experience with being a manu manufacturer group put together and meshing different personalities or whatever. So I'm thinking like she can tell these people some stuff. Then we get Keely, bitch. Keely from 3LW. The whole time, I'm like, I know this bitch finna get up on here, and she finna lie about, you know, what happened with her group and all that stuff. Sure the fuck enough, okay? She gave, she kept it cute, she kept it simple, she kept it sweet, okay? She was like, you know, I was in the group 3LW, then I went on ahead to uh, uh, Cheetah Girls or whatever, because, you know, I was in the group 3LW, and then, you know, we had a little chart success, we was on tour with Destiny Child, and then the Tory left, and then so... Um, Disney called and me and Adrian, we went to go do Cheetah Girls. But then, you know, Adrian wanted to go solo and that's what happened. You know, I don't like the fact that these girl groups have this stigma about drama and always falling out over drama and stuff. I said, yeah, bitch, you caused the drama in your goddamn group. You forgot the KFC and the macaroni and the bucket of chicken, bitch, that you threw at the Tory. I said, uh-uh, Keely, we're not finna do this, girl. Don't rewrite history, okay? Don't do it, bitch. All right. So, um... She show up. Then we get 
Lamisha and Iris from 702. Okay, where my girls at? From the front to back, can you feel it at? I put one hand up, can you really hear that? No, okay, that's that was that was that was the time. Okay, bitch, that was the time. You do not live until you listen to this music. That is the point that I liked about this because this. These people had hits on them, okay? They had hits on them. You know what I'm saying? Whether they went to number one, bitch, you knew one of their songs. At least one. Bitch, CeeLo, okay? Come on. Check me, check me out. Follow, follow. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me stop, bitch. Let me stop. Let me stop. It's, it's, it's nostalgia, right? Girl. So, everything is all cool. It's copacetic. You know what I'm saying? And truth be told, Lamisha and, um... You know, Fallon was just looking at the Asian stuff. Fallon and Felicia just looking at the Asian shit. And I'm just like, we get it. Some of the old, the girls are older or whatever. We got Shamari. Let me see those shoulders bouncing. I want to see those shoulders bouncing. The bow come up in that bitch. Okay, she had to let us know that she was protege of Lisa Lafayette Lopez. Okay, from her group black and everything. We get it. You know, put your little accolades out there and everything. Cool, hike yourself up. I like that, you know, because, but you do that in your confessionals. That's what they did, all right? But see, that's where the twins of Cherish got fucked up, you know? So at this particular moment, everybody is there. We're vibing. We're getting reacquainted with each other. You know, some people don't know each other because when Pam came in, um, Cherish and them was like, girl, who is you? She was like, I'm Pam, you know? They was like, what group you from? Total. They was like, oh, okay, I did like Total back in the day or whatever you know in the way that it's coming off is it's ageism it really is but i get where the twins are coming from because it is a clear group of you know older members from the 90s and members from the 2000s or the 2010s group members or you know artists from the 2010s you know and it's like how do we mesh these two different age groups together and you we already know that the skill is not going to be there in one that is in another you know what i'm saying so i got where they was coming from on there maybe they could have got some people that was closer in age I don't know. Maybe that would have worked too. But then again, it's always going to be drama regardless. Okay, fine. So here's where the drama begins. And here's where Fallon and Felicia really fucked it up for me. With uh, Fucked up with me. Okay. So they all sitting at the table, whatever. And, you know, um, they was talking about the group. It's nine of them. Keely comes out and says... She's not going to be a part of the group, okay? She's there to be the co uh, the creative director, okay? You know, Keely had to put down her little resume and said that, you know, unbeknownst to us, she said that she, you know, helped put groups together, help uh, people, you know, artists develop and, you know, get record deals and stuff like that. And I was like, you want to be this way because you know that your voice is not strong or slash you can't sing, Okay. Just let's just be honest. You were not the singer in the group. Broken promises, promises. Okay, you were not the singer, Sylvester. Okay, it's just it's it's fine, you know. And at this point, I'm sitting here like, why are you here then? If you're not gonna be in this group and be actually singing, why are you here? It's called a super group that was supposed to be nine people, not eight. But now you wanna take yourself out of it. Why are you here? I'm just thinking that. Meanwhile, you got the Cherish girls, they get it and they feel it's like, this is not what I came here for. Who the fuck told you that you're going to be the creative director and all this stuff? I'm not down for it, bitch. You come from a failed ass group and all this stuff. Not just one, but two, bitch. Okay. Who is this? Who is that? Like they were giving so much and I just was not understanding why they was going so hard. Granted, all you have to do is say, well, I don't necessarily agree with that, but we can see what it is. Okay. You, they attacked, they went on attack mode. And next thing you know, they start going back and forth about what they do. She was like, you know, we out here doing stuff. Okay, I just did a song with Justin. Okay, on um Justin Bieber on his new album. I didn't work with Tamar. I didn't work with this person. I didn't work with that person. Chris Brown, all this stuff. My sister just hit a million there. She just became a millionaire just a few days ago. I'm sitting here like, bitch, who gives a fuck? Okay. 
why is just all of this coming out? It's too much vitriol just coming out. I just didn't understand. I was just like, girl, calm down. Like, it was just a lot. And I said, if you are giving a first impression, all right? And then Misha from 702 gets involved. And, you know, they was being rude to her. And they was like, do you even know who she is? It was like, no, nah, I don't know who she is. I said, bitch, disrespectful as fuck. But truth be told, I wasn't necessarily upset at the fact that they said they didn't know who they uh they were truth be told none of the women knew who was coming into the group okay and they are of a different they are the youngest ones so of course they probably wouldn't know who 702 is if you look at them today and i'm going to be quite honest if i was to saw pam on the street if i would have saw lamisha if i would have saw irish um if i would have saw who else in here them three, bitch. If I would have saw them three on the group on on the street, and truth be told, Felicia and Fallon, I wouldn't know who they were either. I wouldn't know who they were either if I would have saw them today on the street. Okay, I know who Seven O Two was because of the pictures that I seen when they was younger, but they don't look the same. Of course, we get older, but they don't look the same. So I didn't take that too hard, but they was coming from a negative place, and I just didn't like it. You know, they go outside having their little conversations about, you know, uh, what they feel and all this shit, thinking that they right, and then the next day, you want to come back and try to do it over again and have a do-over. Bitch, I was with Irish and um, Keely or whatever. I'm not buying that shit. They was trying to, um, you know, say I'm sorry and all this stuff, and I was just like, can we do a new uh, 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 do over or whatever, bitch, would be first impressions, okay? First impressions, you know what I'm saying? And you fuck that up, okay? You get one time to rub me raw and rub me wrong. You get one time to do that. And <clears throat> that's what they did, bitch. I wouldn't have been here for it, okay? I would have been like, you know, truth be told, one of them would have got fucked up, okay? I would have popped somebody. Somebody would have got popped. The whole time they was going back and forth, I was Nivea to the bullshit. Nivea said, give me a fucking rice cake and let me eat it while they doing all this shit. Because this ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't give a damn what goes on. Okay? So, they trying to start it over. You know, uh, Miss Cedar, baby. Okay? Now, if you don't know who Miss Cedar is, you too fucking young, bitch. Okay? That's back when BET was popping, popping. We had Cedar's World. We had Rap City. We had the Rap City with the basement, bitch. Big Tigger. Okay? We had 106 in Park. We had BET Uncut. Um, we had Bobby Jones Gospel. We had um Donnie Simpson. We had all of that shit, bitch. Ooh. Ooh. Girl, it's giving me nostalgia, okay? I'm excited. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just got to give y'all the energy that I'm really feeling right now. It feels like I'm a little bit hype. The, the, the episode was cute. I liked it. It was mess, okay? But anyway, so, you know, she telling them what they're going to be doing, the, the rules. You know, they got to do the song in 30 days or whatever, choreography and all that stuff. And then, you know, they get a vocal coach come in, okay? And this vocal coach, Samari, already know because she's been working with her since she was like 13 years old. So she's excited. They go around a um, piano. <laughs> This was probably one of the most shadiest moments of the goddamn show for me, okay? This is to see everybody's vocal abilities and to see where we are at at this current moment, okay? So, they had them singing different songs, bitch. Keely starts singing Monica's Angel of Mine. And, baby, I said, please stop. It was giving so much of when Wendy Williams asked and told Latavia to sing. Latavia of Destiny's Child, the original member of Destiny's Child, to sing. And she said, birds flying high, you know how I feel. <laughs> <coughs> At the reunion of R&B Divas, bitch. That is what it was giving, okay? I said, Kitty, bitch, you can't sing. Okay, girl, just shut up. That's why you don't want to be in the group because you know your strengths. And your strengths is not your vocals. We know that. And you just showed us, okay? We got Lamisha. She tried to sing something. Eh, Pam tried to sing something. Eh, Iris, she was singing something. She was shaking and everything. The twins really thought they did something. Nivea, she did a little yang, yang, yang. You know what I'm saying? The only one that really had vocal powers at this point was Shamari. She had to show out a little bit. It was Shamari and Nivea for me, okay? And Nivea was just playing. She wasn't even giving you full voice. She was just playing, okay? And I was just like, ooh. These girls are rusty. <laughs> 
some of y'all just can't sing, to be quite honest. Okay, that's just all that it is. Some of y'all just can't sing, and it's a um, reason why you were background singers, okay? You was background, so we won't see you, so that you can do the harmonies, because when we harmonize, it sounds good, okay? But when you try to do and be lead, it just don't work, you know what I'm saying? No shade, no shade, but that's true. Me, me, moving on, you know, uh, we get these two producers, Elijah and Cosine, to come in, and Fallon and them, uh, Cherish Girls, they happy because they work with them before and all this stuff. And they got them sitting around in the studio. And they was like, I want to go around and ask everybody what's the concept that y'all feel about the group. Okay, what you think is going to happen? And I'm sitting here like, oh my God. Mind you, this is like the second day. This is day two of, I don't know if they count in the first day that they may, met as day one. So, this is day two, technically. Um, or... Out of 30, all right? And they got to come up with a concept, okay? And they don't, they're not all on the same page. And that's how I knew right then and there that this is not going to work. Because you want them to come up with this stuff right off the back. And everybody is everywhere. You got Pam. She's all about the Lord. She don't want to be talking about nothing nasty. She don't want to be talking about no sex, no vulgarness. You got Lamisha and Irish and them. They talking about the same thing. You know, they so I'm mother and I'm married and I don't want to talk about this. Shamari like, damn. I mean, we can talk about some uh, love and all this stuff, but if we do some other shit like that, I could be talking about my husband or whatever. And Cherish, and they like, bitch, did we come here to be, this is where the age difference come into it. Because it's like, you got the younger ones, you got Aubrey, you got Cherish, you got um, Shamari even, who don't mind singing about a variety of things. But then you got Lamisha, Iris, and, and, and Pam, and the other girl, whoever else, they, they, they all about not being so nasty. And you ain't got to be nasty, but you know, in your windows of sexuality and stuff like that or whatever, you know, you know, it just amazes me how a lot of the girl groups from, or 90s artists or early 2000 artists or whatever, you know, after they do their career and all, all of the nasty shit that they be singing and rapping about or whatever, they go find God. Pam, total, okay. We got Salt from Salt and Pepper. You know, there's still certain songs that Salt refused to sing, okay. And at one point, Coco from SWV did the same thing. If you looked at their reality show, she wouldn't sing um, downtown. I was like, girl, girl, your man went downtown, okay, girl, stop it. But, you know, they found God or whatever because Pam just kept on singing. God is the one that brought me here, okay, brought me here. You know, um, whatever God wants us to do, that's what I want to go to. I was like, that's fine. That's fine. I love me some God too, but baby, we're going to be doing this all the freaking time. And it's clear that they have no concept. These girls don't know each other from a can of paint. Um, they don't know each other's personality. They don't know what they're going to do. And they need way more than fucking 30 days. And if they are able to pull this shit off, I will be fucking surprised. And then it gets to a point where after we see all of this stuff, Aubrey, you know, she tries to give the girls uh, cherishing them another chance, okay? Um, because they did bump heads at first, but then, you know, she's kind of gravitating towards them. They're outside talking about the state of the group and how this going to work. And they feel like, you know, especially Aubrey, that they should divide the group up into different, you know, two different girl groups. Okay. And so they, the twins was like, okay, cool. You know, let's go up in there. Let's go talk. Okay. And so at this point, they all go in a room and, you know, um, Aubrey presents the idea to everybody or whatever. Of course, Keely is not here for it. And I'm like, girl, truth be told, if you the creative director, you ain't got no say why you here. If you want to be the so-called creative director, you're not going to be in either one of the goddamn groups. So what, what, what's the point? You know what I'm saying? And I was like, y'all sold us on being a super group, not a two double groups. But, you know, if this is what they want to do, I see what they're trying to do. They were basically trying to lump the weaker singers into a group with themselves and, and get all the good singers into one group. Because it wound up being Fallon, Felicia, Aubrey, and, um, girl, who? Fallon, Felicia, Aubrey, and Shamari, okay? And then they put, um, Nivea, I don't understand why, but she's a good singer. Nivea, Pam, um, and, and Lamisha and Irish in a group. And then you got, you know, Keely doing whatever. But Keely is the main one that took offense to it, you know, um, 
she really wasn't here about it and you know calling I, uh, Aubrey the, the divisive and everything else and of course you know they had to tell um our Aubrey what was going on one of the twins from Cherish had to tell her what was going on and what was being said so of course they had to confront her Aubrey had to confront them and all this stuff don't call me divisive I don't like this woo 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 I said girl it is very much given um making a band Danny D. Kane okay the old edition that is what it is giving all right it is giving a lot and i don't know if i want it i kind of do but then again i don't but then again it's entertaining me so i do you know the choreographer come in what's her name Aaliyah janelle or something i be seeing her on instagram or whatever i said if y'all wanted to keep it real hood which y'all should have did knowing damn well these girls these grown ass mature ass women okay I ain't gonna call them, um, you know, old. These mature ass women, you know what I'm saying? Our bones hurt, bitch. I'm 30 fucking four years old and my knees hurt. Y'all already know why. I got arthritis in my shit. I can't bend the way that I want to fucking bend no more, bitch. My body be aching, okay? And I'm just 34, bitch. And I know they shit be fucked up, all right? And you got this choreographer coming in doing all of this shit, bitch. I said, uh-uh. Pam and Lamisha was just standing there trying to get the count. I said, baby, you gonna let them pop a hip out, okay? We can't do that. We can't do that. No, girl, they can't do that shit, baby. Lamisha was looking so damn lost. Pam was trying, but she just at one point said, no, nah, girl, this ain't gonna work. This ain't gonna work, shawty. You know what I'm saying? I said, what y'all should have did was brought Lorian Gibson. Boom, boom, cat up in that bitch, okay? Y'all couldn't afford her? What's going on? What's going on? You should have brought her in. And lit that really would have made this shit nostalgic and, and, and officially old as fuck, okay, bitch? Girl, it would have been something. I would have loved it. Lorian ain't doing shit from what I know or from what I seen. Um... Meaning I ain't seen to ask, okay? So what's she doing? Boom, boom, cat up in this piece. That would have been real cute. So after that, you know, the girls have a moment in the, um, <clears throat> at the end of the episode, uh, Cherish and them was talking to, um, uh, Irish of, uh, 702. And, you know, she was talking about how, you know, um, all of this was coming together and this was her chance. Bitch, let me tell you something. Pause. Iris was talking about her sister, her twin, who passed away from cancer. And, you know, it got real emotional, you know, and how she was getting over that. I remember looking at their unsung, 702 unsung, and um, they was talking about that. It was really, really sad. You know, uh, she was battling cancer for many, many years, and then she just was in hospice and passed away. But um, let me go back to... Bitch, what else? I was just about to say something. Cherry said something rude as fuck. Oh, my God. I can't remember. Oh, shit. What did they say? It was at the beginning when they was going back and forth. Oh, it's going to come to me after I, um, after I, ugh. I'm so mad because they was rude as fuck with that, um, comment. Baby, I can't remember. But, yeah, that moment actually made them come together for the second. And, um, you know, <sighs> After Aubrey had confronted Keely, Aubrey said, you know, I work with Notori uh, for, uh, on the show or something, you know, on Broadway or some shit or whatever. And Notori told me about Keely. All she told me was that the bitch liked to throw chicken. She liked to throw buckets of chicken, okay? She was not here for Keely. So it's going to be Keely versus Aubrey up in this bitch. Cherish twins, they ain't going to... Girl, they troublemakers, okay? They just doing the fucking most, all right? Baby, I wish I remembered what the fuck they said. I had it and I just lost it. I hate it because I was just like, why would you say some shit like that? Okay, it was just, they was just doing the most. They was doing the most and you get one time with me. One fucking time with me, okay? And um, once again, Nivea is just there at this point, okay? I just feel like this ain't gonna work. <laughs> I want it to work, but in the back of my mind, and if I'm being real, we know that it's not. But if it does, I'm going to be proud as fuck of it because bitch is something that I couldn't do. Bitch, you couldn't get me to get up there and try to do some fucking choreography. My body don't move that way, bitch. Not now. Okay, you couldn't get me to uh work with. I don't like group projects. <laughs> this a group project, bitch. I don't like it. Okay, but um, anyway, 
this was a cute first episode i enjoyed it if you can see you know very nostalgic um it's giving us something to be entertained with for the next couple of weeks or so a few weeks i don't know how long but you guys tell me how you felt about the first episode will you be tuned in for the next ashley definitely will and ashley will try to keep the same energy that i had in this because i think that they're really going to give it to us okay one thing about carlos kings and they should have brought his ass back to real housewives of atlanta he's gonna give you a good ass show he going to give you a good-ass show, bitch, okay? And, you know, he didn't fail with this one. I got to say that. Um, but anyway, y'all tell me how y'all feel, and I will see you guys later. Peace.